you guys are enjoying my Trini vlog so far. I've been trying to film a lot of stuff for you guys because everyone's been saying that they love all the scenery and all the people and the market and stuff. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'll try to do more of that for you. So today I'm going to show you guys a tomato choka recipe and I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. You can either boil it or you can roast it. And tomato choka is a very popular breakfast dish in Trinidad and it's usually served with its salad roti. So I'm going to show you guys how I do my version of tomato choka. Like I said, I'm going to show you two ways so you can do it either way. So if you guys want to see how I do it, then keep watching. So these are all the ingredients you'll need for the tomatoes choka and I have some tomatoes here. These are small tomatoes so I'm using about 15 of them and try to get the ripe ones. And all the exact measurements and ingredients are going to be listed in the down bar below. So make sure you click that down arrow to see all the exact measurements and ingredients I'm going to be using. I have some onion that I just chopped into strips some garlic that I minced in my garlic press or you can even grate it or you can also roast it on the stove as well when you're roasting your tomatoes and I have some hot pepper chopped and the peppers in Trinidad are extra hot so I'm just using like a quarter of a huge pepper so if you guys want to use more you could do that and I'm using mine raw you can roast it as well but I find that when you roast it it's much stronger than if you just eat it raw so if you guys want more heat, then you can roast it along with your garlic. So now I'm going to show you guys how to start off by making the tomato stroka. And you'll also need some foil to roast it. Like I said, I'm going to show you two ways. So one way is going to use foil. And you'll need some oil, some vegetable oil, canola oil or coconut oil to chunky the tomato stroka when it's finished. So the first way I'm going to do it is put it in the foil and we're going to put it to get the direct flame on the stove. If you've seen my bygone choka video, then it's going to be similar to that. But instead of putting it directly on the flame, I like to put mine in foil because it tends to kind of dirty your stove a little bit. So you can put it directly on the flame if you want. So I have a little kind of rack that I put on top of the direct flame. And that's where I'm going to put this foil that has the tomatoes in. So you're just going to let it kind of roast for about 15 minutes or until the skin starts to pull apart from the tomatoes and then we will turn it off. And if you've noticed, my mom likes to put foil on her stove. She has a very old stove. It's like more than 30 years old and she refuses to get a new one. So, so spare me the comments. So the second way of doing it is I'm going to add it to some water and I'm going to let it come up to a nice boil and until you see the skin starts to pull apart from the tomato, that's when it'll be ready. So that'll be anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll come back and show you guys when they're both finished. So I put one of the tomatoes to show you guys how it looks when it roasts on the direct flame. So once it gets like really charred on the outside and the skin starts to like separate, then that's when it's ready. And you don't want it to get overburned. So this is perfect here. I'm gonna take this one out. And these two are still going. So as soon as it's ready, I will show you guys how it looks. Okay, so the tomatoes in the foil looks like it's finished. As you can see, some of it has gotten charred as well and the skin is separating so it's been about like 15 minutes so i'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna peel the skin and then mash it so these tomatoes look like they're finished as well as you can see the skin is kind of separating from it so i'm gonna turn it off as well Okay, so I just peeled the skin off the tomatoes and it's gonna be really hot, so just be careful. You could let it cool down first before you peel it. And I'm just gonna use this pestle here to kind of mash it. You could use a fork as well. Okay, so you want to mash it into like a paste or into chunks, depending on how you want it. I like it really thin into a paste. So now we're going to add everything else and we're going to chunk it. So to my tomato paste, I'm going to add the garlic. 
And I'm just gonna add it on top because I want the oil to kind of hit it and fry it a little bit. I'm also gonna add the onions and just leave it to the top, don't mix it in as yet. And add the pepper as well. You can add more pepper if you want, but this pepper is extremely hot. So I have a small frying pan here that I'm gonna use to chunky the tomato stroka. And traditionally, a cultural or metal ladle is used. But my mom's own has a crack in it, so I have to use this pan. She's actually been using this pan for a while, so that's why it looks stained at the bottom. So I know you guys want to comment and say my pan is dirty, but it's not. It's just stained from constantly heating up oil in it. As you know, oil tends to stay in your pots. So chunking just means to fry herbs and spices into hot oil but in this case we're gonna add the oil to the garlic, onion and pepper instead of sauteing the garlic, onion and pepper in the pot. So now just add your oil to your hot pan or your hot cultural or ladle and just let it come up to the highest temperature and you'll know when that is when you see it starts to smoke that's when you'll know it's ready. So you'll see how mine looks when it starts smoking. So as soon as your oil comes up to temperature and it starts smoking at the top, that's when you'll know it's ready to put into the tomatoes. So you're just gonna pour it all over the garlic, onion and pepper just so it gets a light fry. And then take your spoon or your fork and mix that in just so it distributes evenly. Now all you want to do is give it a taste and add salt and maybe more pepper or anything if it needs. So now I'm going to go ahead and start making some sado rotis which I'm going to eat with my tomato stroka and then I'll come back and show you guys the finished product. So this is the finished tomato stroka. I hope you guys enjoy it. You can eat it like this. You can take some sado roti and dip it and eat it or you can also fill inside of the sado roti with the tomatoes and just hold it and eat it. It's much simpler that way and a lot less messy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this simple and easy tomato choka video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to leave any comments, leave them below. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to see all my latest videos. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!